Hey, what's going on guys? So bypassing network blocks on public Wi-Fi's or different networks, whether it's a library or a cafe or even a country where certain websites are not available to you, not being able to access all of that can be very frustrating, but it's not impossible. And the most reliable way of doing that is by using VPNs. Now you're going to have to use a really good VPN. I'll talk about these VPNs in just a minute. Of course, if you're interested in any of them, you can check out the links below if you want to learn more about them or if you want to go straight to the price and discounts. Now, the idea here is essentially you don't want the network that you're connected to to find out that you're using a VPN so that you can avoid getting blocked. Now, the first step to achieving that is using a good, reliable VPN. Of course, I've tested a bunch of VPNs, and that's why I've got these three only on screen, Express, Nord, and Surfshark. I've tested them with torrenting, bypassing restrictions, uh, streaming, general privacy. I've looked into their privacy policies. They do not collect any information about their users. They don't keep any of it. They don't sell any of it to any third parties and whatnot. So you can be sure that your information and your data and your online activity will be safe as long as you're using these VPNs. But even when using the best VPNs, if you don't exactly know how to troubleshoot here and there, you might be running into some inevitable hiccups. So the reason why you want to choose a reliable VPN is because good VPNs are always refreshing and recycling their IP addresses. And if you use a VPN that doesn't do that as much, then you're going to run into these blocks more often than not. Now, the other thing is you want to use obfuscation. Now, most VPNs have obfuscation, but unlike ExpressVPN and Nord, for example, it's not on by default with Surfshark. So you might have to go to the settings VPN and click no borders mode, which will help you access the internet no matter your location. If it's not working, of course, properly without having no borders mode on, but you can turn both of these on, including rotating IP, which will automatically rotate your IP address while your VPN location stays the same. So this is a really handy feature, especially for what we're looking to do here. If your VPN use is still being detected by the network, then you probably just want to disconnect from whatever server that you're using and connect to it again to generate a new IP address. So let me just demonstrate if I connected to the LA server here and I went to what is my IP address.com, what should show is my location being in California, LA specifically. Okay, so that's great. Now, if I want to maintain the same location, but change the IP address, I'll just switch off the VPN and turn it on again. And once it's on, all I have to do is just give it a refresh. And I want you guys to notice how the IP address will change. And hopefully after this, you won't be detected at all. So that's again, one thing you can do. Now, another really cool thing that you can do is change your DNS. So this could actually help you out a lot, especially if you're using NordVPN because it makes it super easy to change your DNS. You can connect to Google's DNS or whatever other DNS, and this will help you out quite a bit. Otherwise, with Express and Surfshark, you'll have to do it manually from your device after connecting to ExpressVPN. So that is, yeah, another way to avoid these blocks. And another thing you want to keep in mind is using the correct protocol. Now, for the most part, when you're connecting to any network, you want to use the NordLynx protocol with NordVPN. You also want to use the lightweight UDP protocol with ExpressVPN. And finally, the best performing protocol with Surfshark is WireGuard. Now, if you're connected to a network that is a little bit more restrictive, then you probably want to switch to OpenVPN UDP. Now, the reason I can't do it here is because I've got advanced protection on. And if I turn all of this off, I'll be able to use the OpenVPN UDP protocol or TCP protocol because the TCP will likely work if the OpenVPN UDP is not working. As it says here, likely to function on all types of network, but might be a little bit slower. So that's something to keep in mind. And again, if you ever run into problems with one protocol, switch to the other and you'll likely see some success. And another measure you can take is switching to mobile data because you can easily bypass VPN blocks that are set on Wi-Fi networks by just simply switching to mobile data. Oftentimes, a lot of schools and workplaces 
block VPNs to restrict content that you can access. But by switching to mobile data, you should be good to go if you'd like just a simple way to avoid these blocks without having to use a VPN. But of course, again, whenever you're connecting to any kind of public Wi-Fi, it is absolutely crucial. Use a VPN, otherwise you're going to be risking your data. And I speak from personal experience. I would never want to go through that again. So whenever I'm in an airport or a cafe or I'm traveling and I'm in need of public Wi-Fi, I would always set my VPN to turn on as soon as I'm connected to any public Wi-Fi. And that's essentially the best way to protect yourself and gain access to the full free internet, no matter your location. Now, when it comes to these VPNs, if you're not sure about which one to go for, you can go with Express if you're looking for the overall best and most reliable, consistent, and easy to use VPN. Honestly, in my experience, anytime I need to use a VPN, I would just head straight to ExpressVPN because it just does the job very well and very quickly for that matter. Now, if you're looking for more of a well-rounded option that offers a bunch of features for a very reasonable price, and these features can actually be very handy depending on your situation. So for example, you've got threat protection, which acts like a little bit of a mini antivirus and an ad blocker. So pretty cool feature. And thanks to the NordLynx protocol, it makes NordVPN arguably the fastest VPN in the business. So if that's something that's, let's say, worth more than the simplicity of ExpressVPN to you, then by all means, go with Nord. But if you're looking for the best budget VPN that gets the job done at the cheapest possible cost without sacrificing any of the necessary security features, although you might be sacrificing some reliability in China specifically, but if you do some manual configuration, you should be able to get these VPNs to work in China. But just a heads up, if you end up going to China, I would recommend talking to the live chat support and discussing the VPN VPN situation in China so that you could take the best precautions that you could take before actually landing in China. So that'll be it for today's video. Now, if you do end up getting any of these VPNs, you probably want to know exactly what plan you want to go for because a lot of people end up spending more money on the monthly plan with the more expensive rate than going with the yearly plan. Because what happens is people think they're not gonna need the VPN for longer than a month, but they end up using it for more than a month and it keeps resubscribing to this very expensive rate. So unless you know you're not gonna need the VPN for longer than a month, then you're probably gonna go with something that saves you a little bit more in the long term, like the six month plan or the 12 month plan. And with the discount below, of course, you'll be able to save even more, not just with Express, but also with Nord and Star Surfshark. So again, you'll find everything you need in the description down below. Besides that, comment below if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer all of them. Like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and stay up to date with everything VPNs and cybersecurity. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.